This is the Kingston Bridge in Glasgow. It crosses over the River Clyde and across the bridge runs the M8 motorway and it's perhaps the most important structure on the entire length of the M8, currently used by over 160,000 vehicles a day. It opened in 1970, but after only 20 years, its structure was discovered to have deteriorated at an alarmingly high rate and was on the verge of collapsing. The problem was that the structure was buggered. Cracks were found in the main bridge supports as well as the supporting walls alongside the river. And as if that wasn't enough, the main road deck had begun to sag right in the middle. Basically, it was at a point where if action wasn't taken immediately, the whole thing was coming down. Naturally, this led to a few questions. Mainly, how had all of this happened? Well, it turns out there were two reasons. One, the traffic levels and weight had far surpassed any of their original estimates. And two, the bridge just hadn't been built very well. After some investigation work, it was found that the bridge deck had shifted several inches from its original position, putting an excess directional load on the main bridge supports. Put simply, the bridge deck was slowly pushing or pulling the main supports into the River Clyde. The bridge deck itself was flexing under the weight of traffic and lifting at each end, which explains why it had begun to sag in the middle. These realisations marked the start of a 10-year bridge repair project that would see millions spent on strengthening and repairing the bridge. A big problem, though, is that the bridge and the M8 motorway that it carries is somewhat important. Without those, traffic around Glasgow becomes a real problem. So the first thing they did was install all of the monitoring sensors that they could get their hands on in order to understand how the bridge was moving and to see if there was any immediate danger. The reason they did this, other than the obvious safety implications, was because the idea was to keep the bridge open to traffic and monitor it closely during its repair works. Glasgow just doesn't function without this bridge and road being open, so they hatched a plan where they could fix the bridge with minimal closures. Initially, traffic had to be limited on the bridge. In each direction, loads of over 7.5 tonnes were restricted to a single lane, with another lane being closed off. At each end of the bridge deck, they installed large concrete ballast to help combat the lifting and flexing of the deck. Not intended as a permanent fix, but they were there to hold everything in place whilst they set about strengthening the central bridge span. More repair and strengthening works were carried out on the supporting walls along the River Clyde, but there was still the small matter of the main bridge supports, which, due to the road deck shifting, were now exerting forces in all of the wrong directions. The obvious solution was to replace them, but they're the main bridge supports. How do you keep a bridge in place, upright and open to traffic whilst you swap out the bits that hold it up? You just jack it all up, of course, all 52,000 tons of it. Okay, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that is quite literally what they decided to do. They first constructed new bridge supports around the existing ones, then proceeded to lift the entire road deck up by half an inch on 128 hydraulic lifting jacks, ensuring that each of the 128 jacks remained within a 2mm height of one another, allowing for only a 5mm level difference across the entire 143m deck. Precise stuff then. Interestingly, the system of jacks cost £2 million, and that was in the 1990s, so quite a chunk of cash. Anyway, having jacked up the entire road deck, they could then remove the old bridge supports, leaving the new ones in place before lowering it back down onto its new and improved supports. I should point out that during the jacking up operation, the bridge and motorway was closed to traffic, but that's perhaps the amazing thing. Despite being a project spanning several years, the motorway and bridge was only ever fully closed to traffic for a handful of weekends and for the 17 hours during the jacking up operation. The the project started in 1995 and was finally wound up and finished by 2006. After all that work, it seems that the bridge is holding up just fine. In later years, there's been some light repairs and refurbishment works carried out, but for the most part, the bridge seems to be behaving itself. There are still monitoring sensors in place that track the bridge's position every 15 seconds, so if something does go wrong, we're going to know about it well in advance of any serious danger. Thanks for watching. Look at you. <laughs>